Hey everyone, Erica here from Big Cat Creative and today I'm going to walk you through how to DIY a mood board for your business. A mood board is essentially just a collection of images, textures, fonts, and colors that will help you express how you want your brand to look and feel. So if you're starting a business and wanting to design a simple brand, or if you're interested in these brand design basics, a mood board is the perfect starting point because it's going to make designing the rest of the brand much easier. There's a few different ways you can create a mood board. You might like to use Pinterest, which honestly is a great method. Or if you're a designer, you might like to use an Adobe design tool. But today I'm going to show you how to actually do it in Canva, which is a free online design tool that is amazing for small businesses and DIY design. If you haven't tried it yet, I guarantee you'll love it. So let's jump into it. Like I mentioned in the intro, there are so many different ways to create a mood board, but today we're going to show you how to do it in Canva. So if you're not sure what Canva is already, go to canva.com and you can just get signed up for a free account. You shouldn't have any trouble creating a mood board on the free account. There's a lot of amazing features on the free plan. But if you are thinking about upgrading, I do highly recommend it. Canva Pro has so many great features if you are doing a lot of DIY or even professional graphic design. So in Canva, once you're signed up, you want to click create a design. And I quite like using a whiteboard for mood boards, even though that's technically not the intended use for a whiteboard, but it has unlimited space. So I'm going to go ahead and click whiteboard, but you can really choose whatever size you want to get started. And because we chose whiteboard, you might see all these like flow chart examples and things like that. What you want to click on is elements. Now you can use any sort of elements for your mood board. Anything goes, there are no rules. I highly recommend searching through images, but you could also use graphics shapes, videos, text and fonts, really anything that's going to convey your brand. So most mood board have images, so we'll start with that. If you've clicked into elements, you can scroll down and look for photos. So click on photos. Now, if you have the Canva Pro plan, you're going to get a lot of extra photos in here because there's a ton of free stock images included in the Canva Pro plan, but you'll also get a ton with the free plan as well. There are some good options with the free plan. If you can't quite find what you're looking for in here, you can use other stock image sites and download those images and then just drag them into Canva and it will upload the image here and then you'll be able to find those in your uploads. So you can upload your own images or images you found from other stock image sites, but if you can just use what's in Canva that makes things even easier. So you can use this search bar here to search different phrases if you kind of know what you're looking for. Basically choose anything that feels aesthetically right for your brand and you can just click on it to add it to the board and you can just continue clicking on images that you like that feel right for your brand and you can always delete them easily from this board later on and we'll obviously rearrange them soon too. I do find just like clicking the more the better and then you can remove later on. You don't want to be too picky when you're just getting started. When searching through images too, it's quite cool to look for textures. So for this example, I'm kind of looking for earthy, neutral textures that might work well with the board. So I can even search earth texture. Okay, that's just giving me dirt, but you know, there's some kind of cool stuff in here, like maybe this or this. So not only under the Canva photos will you find photographs, but you can also find things like textures and patterns and art. Now, when you're choosing the things to go on your mood board, I'm going to give you some tips. The first thing is, even if you have an idea in your head of what you want your brand to look like, make sure that's going to attract your ideal client. So every single image or element or graphic you choose to put on your mood board, always keep that ideal client in mind and think, is this something that they would like to look at? Because at the end of the day, while we do want the brand to reflect you and your business, even more than that, we want it to attract your ideal client. So just always keep them in mind and keep your business in mind. It's really easy to get distracted by all of the different things and photos and colors but try and keep your main goal in mind. So think about your ideal client, keep that picture in your head of what you want your brand to look like. And you don't have to be totally sure yet. You can just have a feel for it. And that's what this mood board is going to help you with. And also when you're searching, make sure to utilize the recommended and related images in Canva. You'll notice when you click on an image, it will automatically give you recommended images that are similar to that. So you can see here, magic recommendations. So if you want more images similar to the one that we just chose, you can click see all, and this is what Canva is recommending to you. So that's really, really handy if you see something that you like. And then the other thing you can use is if you don't get magic recommendations, 
go ahead and click on the three dots on the image you like and see what it's been tagged with. So these are all the keywords and you might find something in here that you didn't think of that you might want to search. So maybe I want to search healthy lifestyle and see what comes up. Okay, it's not really along the same lines of what I wanted, but it gives you some ideas for what you could be searching for. And you can also find the photographer too if you want to look up more of their work. If there's a photo in particular that you love, click on the three dots and it says view more by and their name. If you click on that, you might find some more stuff that you like too. So those are some really handy features. So we spent most of the time in photos here. Like I said earlier, you can also use anything else in this elements area. If there's some graphics, the search function is the same and the recommendations. If you put photos in first, it will actually give you recommendations for what you might like. I believe it's based on the keywords in the photos. So this is really cool. It's giving me some stuff I really like that is gonna work well with my mood board. I'm liking these like sort of plants. I think they look really good. But again, you can search and then you can get things recommended to you. So it works very similarly to photos. If you do want to make sort of an interactive board, you could add videos if you want as well. Again, the whole search feature works exactly the same. Okay, so I just put a video on there. The thing about videos though, is that if you do download this file as an image to use in your branding, it will just render as an image and it won't work as a video. It really depends on how you're going to share this. And then also, if you were interested in playing around with some different fonts, you can click on text here and you can have a look at these built in font combinations, have a look at the fonts and then also think about the colors. So, for example, I do quite like this font for my mood board, but the color doesn't really fit. I'm going to click on it and I can easily change the color of it by coming up here to the text toolbar and I'm going to change that pink to black and you'll see that it also has this pink shadow anything on the text you can change within this toolbar so i can see that it has a drop shadow effect i'm going to click on effects there's a ton of effects here that you can play around with if you want to but i'm just going to go ahead and change the color or i might actually just remove the effect entirely so i quite like that font but i didn't like the color so i just tweaked that so that's something to keep in mind when you're looking at these pre-made sort of quotes that have fonts on them. You can also just add some text by clicking add a text box and you can write whatever you want. So this is now using the same font that I added here. I can see in this toolbar it's called moon time. So I'm going to click into here and I'm going to make this text bigger. I'm going to type in something more relevant like yoga studio and then I'm going to play around with fonts. So it'll give you some recommended fonts. I don't think their recommended fonts are usually too relevant though. So I do recommend just going through and playing around with different fonts. If you are using Canva Pro, you will get more fonts. These ones that have the little crown on them are for Pro only, but there's still lots to play around with here if you aren't on the Pro plan. So feel free to just experiment with some typography. And once you've done that, added images, graphics, fonts, whatever you want. You don't have to add all of those things, but I just thought I would show you all of them as an option. What you'll want to do now is make a bit of a grid. And the way I like to do it is just do it very sort of free and not worry too much about having a really clean structure. I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm just going to delete that video for now. And I'm just going to adjust the size of all of these images, make them a bit smaller. This is when you can start culling things too. So I like this process of just throwing images together. They do snap together really nicely in Canva. If particular images aren't working, then just put them off to the side or feel free to delete them if you're sure you're not gonna use them. So it's basically just click and drag and you can make things bigger or smaller by grabbing the side of them and cropping them or grabbing the corner and dragging it in and out. So it's very intuitive how these blocks all work. I'm going to delete a couple of these images, crop some of them, change the color of these elements, play around with my text, just change the size of it. Okay, so this was just a very, very quickly thrown together example of how you can create a mood board. And like I said, I don't really follow too much structure with my mood boards, but you totally can. If you click on elements again and then come to grids, click see all, you'll see that this is like placeholder images in perfect grids. So you can scroll to whatever one you like. I think I've got about eight images here. I quite like this one. 
So just click on the grid to add it to your whiteboard. If you wanna make it bigger and smaller while still retaining the size, just hold down shift. Otherwise, if you don't hold down shift, you can adjust it without maintaining that ratio, which is also fine. Like I said, there's no rules here. So if you wanted to put these images into this grid, what you can do is actually just drag them into the different frames to wherever you wanna put them. If you wanna adjust them inside the frames, you can double click and then move the image around within the frame. Okay, so that's just another very quick example of how you can do it within a structured area. If you want to release that image from the frame and get it back, you can right click and click detach image and it's gonna pull it out of the frame. And you can also use Control Z to undo anything that you want to undo. And there's some buttons up here to undo and redo as well. So I'm gonna stick with this version of my board and I'm just gonna call it done. So this will just automatically save in your Canva account. If you go home, it'll be on your dashboard as a new file. You can rename it here. I'm just gonna rename it mood board. And then you can also download it. So if you wanted to share it with your designer or your team or anyone that you wanna share it with, click share, download. You can download it as a JPEG or a PNG. And then you'd wanna save that to your branding folder or share it with anyone you want to. So you've got your own mood board file. Okay guys, I hope you learned a lot from that video and you're able to DIY your own mood board now. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. Check out the links below this video for anything related. We also have a ton of other DIY resources. So check those out. If you wanna keep watching, here's some more DIY videos you might like. Make sure to subscribe. We put out new tips every single week. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.